By the end of this video, you'll know how to use the break command in Fusion 360. Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy, and welcome to the Product Design Online YouTube channel, where I demo all things Fusion 360. If you're new here, be sure to hit that red subscribe button and go ahead and comment below and let me know what you plan on using Fusion 360 for. The break command can be activated from the sketch dropdown list or from the right click sketch menu. By using the break command, you can separate sketch entities into two or more sections. I've gone ahead and set up some sketch geometry, which will help me demo the functionality of the break command. If you would like to follow along, I've put a link to the demo file in the video description. First, you'll see that I have a rectangle set up with a line dividing it in half. When I click on the profile shape, it gives me the option to select each of the two sections. I'll now activate the line command from the sketch dropdown list, and I'll draw a line running across the entire rectangle. When I click on the rectangle, you'll notice that the line I just drew divides this rectangle up even further, creating four sections. However, you'll notice when I click on the line command that it is still one solid line. If I click and drag on the line to move it around, you'll notice that none of these intersecting vertical lines break up this horizontal line. This is where the break command comes into play. I'll select the break command from the sketch dropdown list. As I hover my mouse cursor over the line, you'll notice a red X shape where the line will separate if I choose to place the break command. To place the break command, you can either select sketch geometry, which will apply the break at all intersecting points, or you can simply click on a specific point of the intersecting sketch geometry. I'll click at all three intersecting points. One thing to note, you may have noticed the warning that came up in this lower right hand corner that states some constraints and or dimensions may have been removed. You'll also see that when I place the breakpoints, it added these coincident constraints. Just keep this in mind when you use the break tool, you'll want to be aware of your constraints and dimensions. If I now click and drag on the line, you'll see that it breaks at each point. And there are now technically four individual lines. And because of the coincident constraints that were automatically applied, the line will stay connected to these vertical lines. In this second demo, you'll see that I have a closed profile that was created with the fit point spline tool. This shape also has two vertical lines that run through it. Another common use case of the break command would be dividing profile shapes that were built with splines. With the break command active, I'll click on the top of the spline profile and I'll click at the bottom of the spline profile. If I now click on the spline, you'll see that it's broken into four different sections, which gives me the ability to click and delete one of the sections if needed. So you can see that this can be particularly helpful since shapes created with splines often can't be created with other sketch geometry. In this third example, you'll see I've gone ahead and set up a few rectangles that intersect. I'll use these rectangles to show you the difference between the trim tool and the break tool. If I activate the trim tool from the sketch dropdown list and select the inside of the smaller rectangle, you'll notice that the line is not only trimmed away, but it's deleted at the nearest intersecting points. Contrary, if I were to activate the break tool from the sketch dropdown list, and select the same horizontal line, you'll notice that the line is now separated from the original larger rectangle. However, the line is still there for use. 
Ultimately, the main difference between the trim and break tools is the fact that the trim tool automatically deletes the sketch entities, whereas the break tool leaves the sketch geometry so you can continue to use it. In summary, the break command is used to separate sketch geometry at intersecting points. You may not need the break command on a day-to-day -day basis. However, it can come in handy when you need to separate splines and other types of sketch geometry. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all about this tutorial or Fusion 360 questions in general, then be sure to comment them below. Hit that thumbs up icon if you learned something in this video and click subscribe followed by that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.